Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video we're looking at the top 10 rookies in 2024 Tops Update. 2024 Tops Update is here, kind of. It's not really here, it's here on October 16th, 2024. But as of today, which is September 23rd, 2024, the checklist has been revealed, and so we're looking at the top rookies to target in anticipation of this set coming out. Just be aware, while these rookies are on here, it does not mean they're a good investment. We are solely looking at the best players in this particular set. With that being said, there are a lot of players of significance in the hobby, at least in regards to name value, that we're gonna go over, but but just overall, not all these players are gonna have great careers, so be careful when buying. With that being said, I do wanna note that a few of these players, namely Jackson Holiday, Jackson Merrill, Jackson Churio, and then Nada Jackson, who is at Wyatt Langford, forgive me. Those four players have short prints in top series two, but their true flagship rookies are in this set, 2024 tops update, so they will be on this list because these are their flagship rookie cards. I'll talk about 2024 top series two versus 2024 tops update at the end of this video if you wanna stay for that to explain my thoughts and what card you should target. With that being said, let's look at how I'm actually doing this. You'll see right here is Cade Smith and Christian Scott. They are tied for number 10. Cade Smith is a reliever. Christian Scott has a top 100 prospect ranking. He's a pitcher. Has had a great season for the Mets so far, but you can see I have one, two, three, four categories, age, prospect ranking, minor league stats, and major league stats to rank these players. So has a little bit of science behind it, you could say. One thing I'll point out is if you're looking at age, if you're 20 years old, you get 10 points. If you're 29 years old, you get one point. Prospect ranking, if you're a top 10 prospect, you get 10 points. If you're a top 25 prospect, you get eight points. If you're number 90, you get one point. Minor league stats, if you're good, you get 10 points. If you're bad, you get one. Major league stats, same thing, one through 10. I then average it out and that's how I ranked these. And those two pitchers were tied for number 10. I don't know, pitchers are always hard to rank. But number nine, we have another pitcher, Jared Jones, who's been a little bit better than those two. Jared Jones is 22 years old. He is a top 70-ish prospect. He has about average to above average minor league stats and he's been good this year. The six may have been too brutal for Jared Jones. If you look at his stats though, he's basically being tanked by a couple bad starts the last little bit. You can see he actually had six runs in Cincinnati, actually a couple days ago. And then at the end of August, he gave up five runs against Chicago. And that's what's really hurt his ERA at 4.14. But he looks nasty. And him and Paul Skeens at the front of that rotation are going to be very, very good for years to come. But Jared Jones is here. If you look at, again, his minor league stats, he is a top prospect, 60 and 74. And he's about a 4.33 career ERA guy. In 2023, he had a 3.85 ERA. It's about as deep as we're going to go there. But that is Jared Jones at number nine. At number eight is Andy Pajes for the Dodgers. Andy Pajes, 23 years old. He is a top 80-ish prospect. His minor league stats, they're pretty solid. Major league stats are above average. Here's Andy Pajes, 1.2 war, a 101 OPS plus, so just above league average offensively, but adding value in the field on the base paths. 250 batting average and 11 home runs isn't terrible, especially for a rookie at age 23 years old. If you look at his minor league stats, though, so we're gonna see a lot of the potential of who he could become. In this year, 2024, he had eight home runs, 356 batting average, a 1.085 OPS. In 2023 as a whole, he actually had only three home runs, but hit 277 with a 907 OPS. Minor leagues overall, 910 OPS. He's a solid player. So that is Andy Pajes. Let's see if he can develop his bat more and get above 101 OPS and get closer to like the 120 to be more than just a league average bat and kind of like a defensive replacement player. At number seven, we have Kyle Manzardo for the Cleveland Guardians. This is a player who actually is a top prospect. Kyle Manzardo, if we go look at his minor league stats, here he is right here. He came into this league as a number 59 prospect according to Major League Baseball, the number 37 prospect according to Baseball Prospectus. And he's been raking. He's been really good. In 2024, in 84 games, he hit 20 home runs, had a 946 OPS and hit 267. So a lot of power, 548 slugging percentage. Even his OBP wasn't bad, almost at 400. So he walks a lot, doesn't strike out a ton. In the big leagues, it hasn't quite translated. Of course, some players just need time. He's only 23 years old, but four home runs, 724 OPS and a 102 OPS plus. He is adding much less value defensively because he's a D first baseman type player and that's unfortunate but 0.1 war Kyle Manzardo hired top prospect than Andy Pajas even though they're roughly the same age is what kind of got him the nod right there at number six is Colt Keith if you don't know who Colt Keith is you should Colt Keith was a top prospect heading into the season he was like a top 20 prospect roughly and if you didn't know he broke camp with the big league team and he's been okay he's been league average minor league stats are great 
but here's Colt Keith, 1.3 war, 96 OPS plus. So while he is slightly below league average offensively, he still is contributing with 13 home runs, 59 RBI, 262 average, and a 1.3 war because a good defense and base running type of a situation. And again, you can see where he's ranked here. If we scroll down though, let's look at who he is in the minor leagues. In 2023 as a whole, he had a 306 average with 27 home runs and 932 OPS, which is why he's justified to have this high of a score. The Tigers are streaking for the postseason right now, which is pretty crazy. So maybe we'll see him in the postseason, but Colt Keith is a pretty solid player. He does not have a short print in series two. So this is his first appearance as a rookie. At number five is Jackson Holiday. It might surprise you he's this low, but the truth is he's just not been good yet in the big league level. He has a 50 OPS plus. He's well below league average. He has five home runs. He has negative 0.3 war. Overall, he's going to figure it out. In my opinion, we saw with Mike Trout in 2011, he wasn't Mike Trout, but in 2012, he won rookie of the year. We saw with Aaron Judge in 2016, he was not Aaron Judge, but he won rookie of the year in 2017. Same concept is pretty common, especially for a player that's only 20 years old. We can see that with his stats here. He's 20, he has 10 points, Number one, unanimous prospect, great minor league stats, just has not translated at the big league level yet. We can look at that even further right now if we go to his minor league stats. Here he is across the board, according to all publications, number one, minor league stats in 928 OPS with 304 average and 23 home runs. And even this year, he's not been bad, but overall last year, he hit 323 across high A, double A, triple A, and single A. He had a 941 OPS with 12 home runs. So I think he'll figure it out, but as of right now, he's number five because of his poor performance in the big league level. And number four is Wyatt Langford. If you haven't paid attention to Wyatt Langford recently, you might be surprised he's this high, especially at the major league score of seven, because he was really not that great at the beginning of the season, but he has kind of figured it out. He is actually turned into a really solid season. Fun fact, I saw Wyatt Langford at home run down in Arlington. I went to a Yankees Rangers game while on a work trip in Dallas, and that was fun to see. But 3.3 war, a 108 OPS plus, a batting average of 253, 13 home runs. So he's been solid. He's actually had a lot of his home runs in the last few months because he started out for a while with only two home runs. I think one was like inside the park, but either way, he is figuring it out. Let's look at his minor league stats to see why I gave him a 9.5 for minor league stats. He was good in only 47 games because he came out of college ready. 1.118 OPS, 351 batting average, 10 home runs in 47 games. I couldn't give him a full 10 because he only played for like 47 games, but still pretty good. At number three is Jackson Merrill. You might say, why is Jackson Merrill not number two above the other two players? Or number one above the other two players. And that's just because the other two players have been slightly better and they're slightly younger. I don't know. It's just my thoughts. All these players can be moved up or down one or two positions, but Jackson Merrill, 21 years old, top of 10-ish prospect. His minor league stats, they aren't as good as you're going to expect to see from a player of his caliber now, but his major league stats are that good. 4.3 war, a 128 OPS plus, 292 batting average with 24 home runs and 16 stolen bases. He's playing elite defense in the outfield. He never played the outfield until this year. He was always an in in actual infielder, so just to see that all is very impressive, but again, number 10, number 12, number 17 prospect, but his minor league stats is an 802 OPS at the 295 batting average with only 21 home runs in 200 games. Now he's only played 151 games. The big league level has 24 home runs. So that's great to see the power is translating. That is Jackson Merrill. Also very clutch. We probably will see him do something in the postseason, which I hope to see. At number two is Jackson Churio, the third Jackson and probably the best Jackson on this list in some ways. He is 20 years old. He was a top 10 prospect. His minor league stats were very similar to Jackson Merrill they're a little bit underwhelming but he he was young so is Jackson Merrill at these different levels and he always got a little bit better and at the big league level he's having a great year 8.5 he started out slow but he's turned it on lately here is Jackson Churio at the big league level currently he has 3.8 war a 119 OPS plus a 273 batting average with 21 home runs and 21 stolen bases so nice 2020 season for him while playing great defense and just being a great offensive player overall this solid it's good to see he did turn it on because he did start out slow but overall there shouldn't have been much doubt because we could see he takes a minute to develop at every single level if you want to look at his minor league stats and pause it it always kind of takes him a second but then he figures it out again only 20 so not super surprising at number one it might shock you we have a pitcher paul skeens is at number one he is 22 years old he was a top 10 prospect minor league stats were an eight they could have been technically higher i gave him a 10 for major league stats that might sound crazy but look at these stats 6.0 war 11 wins 1.99 era in 22 games in a whip below one and 131 innings pitched i know that chris sale is going to win the cy young I would not be surprised if Paul Skeens finished second or third. And if Chris Sale wasn't 
round, he would be arguably in that position. He pitched in Cincinnati yesterday, because I'm recording this on a Monday. I didn't go watch, and I regret it because I wish I could have seen that. But overall, 213 ERA plus as well, which is adjusted to league average. He's been amazing. His minor league stats, if you go look, he actually is a top 10 prospect again, but he only pitched 12 games, had a 1.85 ERA, was ready, and they called him up. Combined this year, he has over 200 strikeouts for those 34 games that he did pitch. So those are the top 10. Those are the top 10 I personally think are going to be the best to look out for for opening packs. And the one thing I'll note again, Paul Skeens, this is his true rookie card. He does not have a short print in series two. Jackson Churio, Jackson Merrill, White Langford, and Jackson Holiday all do. This Topps update set is their true rookie. I want to make that clear. At least in my opinion, this is the true rookie. These have parallels. These are the cards that are going to be sought after. All of these are printed really highly and no one's really targeting these as like the cards we want for the long run. But these update parallels like the blacks or the golds or the camos, all these different things are the cards people are going to go after. But it's like a level higher for Paul Skeens because he does not have a short print. All these players will also have golden mirror image variations of their base cards. And if they have debuts, which I believe they all do, they'll have golden mirror image variations for those, I believe as well. So just keep an eye out for those, but that will make it murky for some, but just know in my personal opinion, and I spoke to a couple guys on my spitball and cards channel that I do, they also agree that these cards are the ones to go after. The only exception may be Jackson Holiday because his series two short print, he has two or an SSP, is him holding the bat on his shoulder in reference to the FF air card of Billy Ripken, which is really cool. So he may be a unique situation, but overall, these are the players that are probably gonna be the best rookies out of the set. We'll see if that's true and how it plays out, but it'll be fun. So let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this set, and I will see you in the next video.